Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 27th Qt tutorial with uh, C++ and GUI programming. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to step away from the GUI portion and delve into a little, little more difficult subject matter, because I think you guys are ready for it. All right, So, fire open Qt Creator and go File, New, and let's make a new project, and we're going to make a console application. I'm going to stay away from the GUI portion just because I really want you to understand the concepts without the GUI really cluttering anything up. So, and we'll call this a uh, timer. Whoops, call this my timer test. Put it wherever you normally put it. And next, next, finish. And what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a queue timer. Um, if you don't know what a timer is, think of a, a clock on the wall. That's a perfect example of a timer. It counts every second the second hand moves, every minute the minute hand moves, every hour the hour hand moves. So it's actually three timers in one, seconds, minutes, hours. You get the point. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a very simple timer. So what we need to do here is actually create a class. So I'll go add new and we're going to go cute. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go C++ C++ class and we need to give it a name here. So we will say my timer and we're not going to fill in base class or any of this other information because I want to explain some stuff as we go so just leave it as is and hit next and finish and it creates my timer h and my timer dot cpp which in them, in themselves are pretty much blank they just look like a standard C++ class so let's fill in some includes here get that out of the way Qt core and then in the mytimer.cpp we're going to do the same thing Oops. include Qt core sorry about that I've got my my keyboard set up for Call of Duty Black Ops so it's doing crazy things as I type alright so let's say include and we'll just say Qt debug now let's flip back into the header here. We want to be able to use the signal slot mechanism in Qt. In order to do that, this class has to be a Qt object. So what you need to do is actually inherit the Qt object. And you could do Qt widget or anything else, but we're just going to use the Qt object, which is the basic object in Qt. Now, there's one more step, and this is often a misstep, and it will cause a lot of frustration. You have to add the Q object macro. What this does is it converts this class into a true Q object, so it can actually use the signal slot mechanism. Um, without this, uh, the mock or meta object compiler, which runs in the background every time you compile this, will not work. If you're wondering what mock does, it actually connects the signals and slots that we've learned about, connects them all together. But once you have the inherited part and the Q object macro, you're good to go. And I'd actually at this point recommend you just build it just to make sure it compiles. Because if it doesn't compile at this point, you're not going to get anything to run right. As you see, we had a successful build, so we can continue. All right. Now we're just going to say hmm, Q timer. And we'll call it timer. And then we're going to make a slot public slots and it's just if you're wondering because you've never done this before yes a slot is just a normal function the only difference is you have this public slots that is the only difference right there as long as your function is listed underneath a slots you get a public and private as long as it's listed underneath slots it'll be treated as a slot all right, now let's flip into our our actual implementation file here, and we're going to say timer equal new Q timer, and we want to make the parent the current class, and the reason for this is the class is an object, and if we make an instance of the class, when it's deleted, it'll delete all the children, and we're making the timer a child of this, so the timer pointer will automatically get deleted. All right, then we will say uh, 
let's actually implement our slot here. My timer. And we'll say my slot. You notice how this has a special icon. It has the slot icon. And there it is your code for your slot. Voila, not that hard. And we're actually going to say queue debug timer executed. That way, every time the timer is executed, it's just going to print out timer executed. Now, we're not done yet. We've created our timer, but we haven't told it to run. So what we need to do is actually connect it. And the signal is the timeout. And the receiver of that is this the current object and the slot is you guessed it my slot and then we can actually take our timer and start it now you notice how it has a a couple different ways of doing this it's got two constructors it has just a default and in milliseconds well if you do it in milliseconds you can actually describe or I should say you can relay how many milliseconds you want in between. So we're going to do a thousand. That way every second or 1,000 milliseconds it's going to fire. And when that timer goes off in memory it's going to call my slot because remember we connected it right here. We're still not done. We need to actually create an instance of this. So let's go include whoops, my timer and then let's actually create an instance of this. And that's it. All right, now, before I run this, I want to walk through the code really quickly. In the main.cpp, we are starting our application. Here's our Qt core application with arguments and return a exec. And in between there, we're creating a new MyTimer class. The MyTimer class is a Qt object. And you see we have the Qt object macro, and we're inheriting Qt object. And we've made our own slot called MySlot. And in the constructor, we are creating a new timer in memory, connecting the signal and slot, and starting the timer. And it's going to go off every 1,000 milliseconds. And every time it goes off, it's going to print out timer executed. So fingers crossed, compile and run. And if you've followed along, and if I've typed this correctly, the application will start. And then you can see that the timer fires every 1,000 milliseconds. Now, it's important to note that this is not a perfect 1,000 milliseconds. It's off by a couple milliseconds. So you may notice if you're doing some high-performance application, you may need to find another route. But for the basic timing mechanism, this is perfect. So this is Brian. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.